Okay guys, here we are on another rainy evening. But luckily we have two sets of the Encanto uh, Disney movie which arrived two months after I've ordered it. Oh my goodness. Um, it's a lesson learned for me not to order from a specific uh, vendor wherein he promised this one quite a long time ago but it got held up somewhere um, I can't blame him though but still it wasn't a happy experience and to top it off we have a crumpled sticker here but it's not that bad it's still we can still fix that one anyway you know the drill guys we have here the parts separated and then I'll be showing the pictures of the progress as I build the Enchanted House which is the modification of two sets of the Disney Encanto. So let's get started. And there we have it guys, the Enchanted House Mock using two sets of 43202, the Disney Encanto. So for this one, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, even as the creator of this mock, I was smiling all throughout the build. I did find one error in the building the floor for this part. But it's very minor and I think I can update the instructions so people who buy it would still see the updated version. But like I said, um, when I see this one built up, especially with the stickers on the side here and here, as well as on the doors and other parts of the house, I can't help but smile. Um, it's just so whimsical. Um, and out of the ordinary in terms of the color scheme um, compared to the other modular buildings which are on the more serious side of things I guess uh, considering that we're using the enchanted or Encanto um, set and how colorful their house was in the movie um, a mock coming from it would translate into something colorful as well um, and even though it's just two levels of the floors and then the roof it's relatively still uh, high enough if you want to pair it up with other modular buildings especially for the bookshop house or townhouse and if you have other modular buildings in your city that are of the similar size most notably is the beekeeper's shop, which I will show later on. Um, I am really happy to have both of them in my Lego town and be able to put them side by side. I might end up uh, using a 32 by 32 place plate so that I can reuse this one for another build which would massively require a half base plate. But since I'm intending to have the beekeeper's shop and the enchanted house 
um, placed side by side anywhere uh, in my Lego town, I might as well place them in just one um, base plate and then uh, modify them and then a bit so that I can maximize the parts usage as well as um, make them more cohesive in color such as for example this one here um, I intend to use more lime colored bricks because I could use these tan bricks for something else and all those small modifications and improvements because um, although this one is very stable there are still some areas where you could always improve on so uh, we'll see that when we do the inter interior overview but um, for the exterior especially for the facade I think you would agree that it is quite nice and colorful but not too much that you, it hurts your eyes um, the medium nougat and the light bright orange um, matches really well and it adds up a little bit with this orange color here and the gold piece um, they look really well together and the splash of purple or lavender as well as the dark pink and light pink for the flowers just adds some more interest in the color scheme of things also just to break the color scheme of the bright light orange you have here on this side the medium lavender balcony and for that balcony um, the white fence really works well as well it's just very subtle it's not too sharp or hot when you, um, when you try to look at it um, going around on the side you have here a wall made up of plates and it's just another way of using the parts that were available from this set um, because um, honestly we didn't have enough bricks to fill out a whole modular building so I had to use plates but make them part of the design wherein it doesn't seem like it's too much of um, a desperate move <laughs> as you would say um, it's pleasing to the eyes still though so I'm happy with that and then at the back it's still very clean although you have some color differences here I would prefer this one to be uh, bright light orange and then this one can be uniform medium nougat or I could just change all of them into bright light orange if I have enough parts and the same goes for this one although I do have to say that the coral uh, masonry bricks isn't too good for the eyes here um, it works well with the design considering that the house was intended to, to be really colorful and bright so I guess I can I can let this one go for now maybe when I modify the whole French Street I'll change this one into something proper for the second level here it sort of mimics the front area but using the available colors and parts that came with the set like for this one it would have been preferable as a bright light orange brick but since we only have orange I used it and the same goes for this one these stand bricks preferably we could use medium nougat if we can change that and this one's into orange instead of dark orange but those are very minor details and those imperfections in the building make it more sort of like in theme with the Encanto house we're in hey <laughs> we're not perfect but this is how we are and um, it those imperfections actually make us even better than before or what we would have been anyway that's just me ranting about um, some odd stuff 
<laughs> anyway, um, so okay, let's go into the interior of the modular building. Okay, so as we enter the door for the main part of the house, you can see here a sewing machine and some cabinet on top of the uh, sewing machine. And then there's a stair that leads down where you have the living room and a small table with chairs, which could end up being the dining area as well. And then you have the small kitchen and then there's a door there that leads to the back part of the house. On this portion, you have the stairs using those hinges um, in a different way so that they're stable and they don't sort of bend the other way. Um, then you have here a stickered piece. So as much as possible, I used the stickered pieces that came with the set, especially for this part here. So. You can still utilize those sticker pieces that come with the two sets and make use of the other parts like those colorful teapots, the eggs, and all those different small pieces. Um, for this part, I'll show you that you can actually remove this wall here, although it's not necessarily um, required, but if you want access to the building much more uh, freedom to place in your minifigs you can do so by removing that other wall but considerably it's still very solid and wait I'll show you see you can carry it without it falling apart um, the room for improvement that I can see for this one is this wall here. I might end up connecting this and this and this part here because it's standing on its own currently but it's a simple modification wherein you just connect it with a few more bricks and maybe some tiles on the top so that it doesn't move. But overall, I think it works well and you still see the colorful parts of the set but in a more organized and cohesive way wherein you have this wall but it's uniform where they're all lime colored and then the theme for the front part here is reflected somewhat on the back portion where you have those uh, bright light orange and medium nougat combinations anyway that's it for the ground floor so coming from the stairs from the ground floor you have your bedroom and this bedroom has a bunk bed where you have the magenta colored um, bed on the bottom and then you have the green colored bed on top uh, this is one way to maximize the space wherein i'm using those sticker pieces and then making two beds instead of just one where we have some limited space here I can still add also here another sewing machine so this one house is um, a house for a lot of tailors and seamstress <laughs> anyway um, on this side here I utilize this double paneled um, doors and sort of made them into a balcony styled um, separator or separation from the bedroom to the balcony if you want you could potentially put um, two glass panels here and then here and you can put a door here but considering that this house is sort of like an open house and you want to have full access to the balcony it's not really a mandatory thing for you to add those um, panels and doors and then also here you have these two boxes or containers where you can place some fruits or vegetables or plants whatever you want to uh, add details to this portion where you have another set of um, table and chairs also on this side you have another box with a gift and you can put the uh, gift 
pieces there if you wanted to. So that's it for the second level. Um, again, considering that we only use two sets of things, set 43202 and the limited parts that we have in that set, um, I think this one is a good deal. Uh, I like how it turned out again. And oh, the special piece is right here on top. And there are some more special pieces like this one, which I think we can use for other builds or other mocks later on. Uh, also, I'd like to showcase this part here. Um, you have those sticker pieces on the sides and then you have lots of flowers in front of the window. So colorful, but not too colorful, I think. <laughs> And for the last part, we have the roof here, which is relatively easy. It's just a plate with some supports on the bottom. And then you have plants on top with some butterflies and flowers. So it's, this one is relatively easy to build and is potentially the last build you'll have to do for the mock. This one has some interesting building techniques that I've used. Uh, at first, when I was just trying it digitally, I wasn't 100% sure I'll be able to pull it off, but I did. Um, I even tested it out um, with some parts that I have in my collection, just to make sure that these sort of curved aesthetics would be able to translate into an actual build. So. I can't tell you how I did that, but I think you can see in some of the built photos and um, other YouTubers who have done this, um, like Ellie V. Uh, she showed some ways on, on how she did it or built this one, and it's fun. <laughs> uh, that's all I could say. Uh, it's just like, oh wow, I didn't even realize I, we could do that for those parts. Anyway, it's simple but um, effective, I, I would say. Although we cannot access the interior because there's technically no inside portion here that you could use for minifigs or mini dolls. But I think it adds a really nice texture and feel to the house. And overall, if you think about it, coming from those two sets that although they are really nice to look at as well um, I would have preferred them to make the Encanto set a lot bigger and then also you wouldn't expect this mock to come from those two sets wouldn't you? Um, <laughs> I don't think you would but uh, Anyway, I'm, I'm happy with this one. It really makes me smile when I look at it, especially when I place it next to the beekeeper's shop, which I will show you now. And there we have it, the beekeeper's shop and the enchanted house side by side. They have very similar aesthetics where you have curved windows and then you have doors on the side and balconies but they still have different aesthetics uh, in terms of the style of the roof and all the other parts that come in with the set and they have different businesses where this one is more of a house with some sewing machines and this one has a beekeeper's shop where you have lots of different um, things for sale on the ground floor and the small living space on the upper level but again I think you would agree that they look really well together and they would really work well if you place them with other smaller sets rather than combining with them with the bigger modular buildings but still you can do that if you wanted to just you just need half you would just need to place them properly so that they don't overpower 
the other buildings that are placed beside them or that they don't look too small compared to the other neighboring buildings. So there you have it. Um, it's like two different houses with different seasons but they're fun to look at together. So anyway guys, thank you very much for watching this video. If you did, please click the like button and the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you'd be notified when I release new videos, especially when I release new mocks like these ones. Um, I post mostly now um, Lego Town updates and mocks that I release on sites like velvabricks.com, rubricable.com, moxmarket.com, and some kits on buildamock.com and letbricks.com. Anyway, guys, again, thank you very much, and I hope you have a great day ahead. I will be making more videos like this. Until next time, bye!